Hi guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. I hope all of you are doing good and staying safe like always. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering a very interesting topic when it comes to the world of pageantry. But before we move on, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, still don't forget to hit the subscribe button because we will become a 15,000 family very, very soon. I cannot wait to hit that milestone. So your support is really appreciated and also don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you like my type of videos. And once you've done both of those things, now let's get on with the video. Now for the longest time, especially in the world of pageantry, it has been such a big debate and a very frequently asked question. Does height really matter in beauty pageants? Now while we are making inclusive steps towards it, the Miss India organization reduced the height criteria from 5.5 to 5.3 last year. Let's see what they do this year and Miss Diva also followed in the footsteps and reduced the height criteria from 5.5 to 5.4 this year. But still, despite all of that, it's still a very recent change and a lot of contestants do keep asking me sometimes that even though the height criteria is reduced, will they still select the taller candidates or does height really really matter when it comes to actually making decisions and what role does it play when there's a tiebreaker? Now I have probably said this on my channel before, the reason the pageants have height criteria and this I am saying because the organization specifically had a one-on-one -on -one interaction with us and told us this that they want tall contestants, preferably over 5'5 and now 5'4, 5'3 because beauty pageants are a part of the glamour and fashion industry and whoever are the contestants, the title holders, they will end up working for certain designers on stage and also in fashion shows after the pageant is over. And so when a certain designer wants to showcase their garments as a model and not as a beauty pageant contestant, as a model, you have to have a certain height so that the garments look good on you and you can showcase their design. It's not about the garments being altered to your height because the border will go away and basically practical issues such as that. And even for runway, the minimum height criteria for runway shows in India is actually 5, 7 and above. So pageants actually have a reduced height criteria. The reason they keep it while the international pageants don't is because every country has their own average height and preference as to what height of models would they look for in fashion shows. But beauty pageants are trying to become more and more inclusive and in the future I hope that the height criteria is eradicated altogether. We do have a lot of hashtag movements going on and everything. But before I get distracted and go off on a whole other track, I want to come back to the topic of today's video and I want to talk about a lot of the beauty pageant contestants and queens that we have had in the past who are not adhering to the stereotypical height that we all imagine that all the winners have had always been tall. That is actually not true at all. And today I'm going to be talking about a lot of the short beauty queens that we have seen in the past. And I hope that some of you can take away some motivation from this video. Sometimes knowing that somebody else has already done it opens up avenues for us mentally also and you feel more confident and you feel like if she did that I can also do that. So we're starting all the way back in 1958. Did you guys know that the winner of the Miss Universe pageant in 1958 which was Colombia's Luz Marina Zuluaga, I hope I pronounced her name right, she was actually the only Colombian woman to ever win the Miss Universe pageant and the only Colombian who won in 56 years, that's a huge time, the only woman from Colombia who won Miss Universe in 56 years until Paulina Vega became Miss Universe in 2014 and we all know Paulina. She's such an amazing contestant and I'm a huge fan. What I want to tell you guys about Luz Marina is that she was only between 5'3 and 5'4. So even back in 1958, we had someone of that height win the Miss Universe pageant. And so that should definitely motivate you. It proves that if you have the caliber, if you are able to charm and impress the judges with the type of impact that you make, the kind of thought process that you have, the words and the vision that you have for where you want to take forward the legacy of Miss Universe, for instance, in this uh, example. And while I was doing my research on Luz Marina, I also found out that there's quite an interesting story to her win at Miss Columbia. So actually, Marina did not actually win the contest when it comes to Miss uh, Columbia. She actually finished as the first runner-up. However, what happened is the person who actually won the Miss Columbia pageant in 1957, Doris Gill, she actually got married before the Miss Universe pageant happened. And even since then and even till now, the rules state that no candidate can be married before the final competition itself because you do have to legally be a Miss 
when you're going for the beauty pageants. For that reason, the current title holder was asked to resign and that is how Marina became Miss Columbia by default because she was the first runner-up. So in any case, the title holder cannot fulfill her duties and not commit to her responsibilities for any reason. The runner-ups automatically become the title holders and the winner position. And that is how, just look at how fate and destiny turned out for her. She was extremely short. I'm sure even in 1958, there must have been a lot of people who must have thought that height would have played a role, but she ended up winning. And this was years ago, and we have definitely come a long way since then. The next beauty queen that I want to talk about is Miss Jamaica from 1963, who also ended up winning the 1963 Miss World title. And one of my favorite points from the story that I read about her is that during the Miss World pageant, Crawford actually wore this swimsuit with a really high neckline. I'll put a picture over here so that she appears taller. And I thought that was really, really smart. So any of the contestants in pageants who feel like they don't have enough height to compete with the other contestants, you might be eligible, obviously. But there are certain styling hacks and tricks to actually appear taller. So you have to understand whether you have a long torso, whether you have long legs, and then you got to accentuate and flatter that body part and make yourself appear taller. So on this note, I actually want to share a styling tip that I actually used when I went for my auditions as well. So we all wear denim shorts in pageant auditions. And something that I always share with my students at Conquer, and this is the first time I'm sharing this tip on YouTube for all of you guys, is that whenever you're buying shorts for your pageant audition, try to have shorts which don't have a straight cut, but they in fact have like a hot pants cut. I'll put pictures here so that you guys can understand better. And I also wore similar shorts at my own audition. And how that helps is that once you're wearing heels and you have that cut in your shorts, it actually makes your legs look a lot longer and you look taller. The next queen on my list who has broken barriers and definitely the height stereotype is Miss Universe 1965. She was from Thailand and her name is Apasra Hong Sakula. Apasra also stood tall at 162 centimeters, which is around 5-3 feet again. And she was also the first woman from Thailand and the first Southeast Asian to win the 14th Miss Universe title. Look at how many examples I have to share with you guys. And these are only the ones in the 20th century. I haven't even come to the 21st century yet. And another story I found out is that most of the old Miss Universe title holders did not actually get to keep the crown. And so what happened is when Thailand hosted the Miss Universe pageant in 1992, Apasra was actually re-crowned. She was given a new crown by the organization and crowned by her predecessor, the 1991 Miss Universe winner which I thought was a really sweet story and a really kind gesture on behalf of the Miss Universe org. And now jumping to the 21st century, we have so many examples when it comes to recent years. We can look at 2012 Miss Universe, Olivia Culpo. Olivia is five foot five inches and that has in no way stopped her from making a mark in the entertainment industry. Not just did she win the Miss Universe pageant in 2012, she is a very well-known American fashion influencer and now even an actress. You've probably seen her on a lot of popular movies and TV shows as well. And the year after she won the Miss Universe pageant, in 2013, Olivia also walked for Sherry Hill's fashion show. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that her height did not stop her from walking for runway. Sherry Hill is a dream for, I guess, everyone. And look at what Olivia has made of herself now. I recently was talking to someone and they were telling me that when it comes to pageants, it's not about what you win at the pageant, it's what you take back from the pageant. And I thought that was such a beautiful sentence. In Olivia's case, she won the title. But like I said in a couple of videos ago in my best pageant advice video that it's how you capitalize on the platform and the exposure that has been given to you. And even if you don't win the pageant, you can make so much of yourself. There is a bucket load of opportunities that are going to come your way. You just need to be confident. And when you feel like I deserve this, that's when that thing will come to you. You got to attract what you want in life. Now, just after a few years in 2017, again, one of my most favorite Miss Universe in the last few years, Demi Le. She also has a height of around 5'4 to 5'5". And she also was such a big fan favorite. I mean, South Africa has been delivering exceptional beauty queens and sending them to Miss Universe in the last couple of years. Again, height was not a criteria that was a concern at all. If Demi can win at 5'4", 5'5", 
anybody can win and that was true for no matter which country you come from as long as you're eligible and you reach that platform and that stage stop thinking that just because you're shorter you cannot win and there's no way i could possibly end this video without mentioning maria tatel i mean we all know her right now i don't even think i need to introduce her here on my channel because i've spoken about her so many times already and i'm such a huge admirer and i hope to be able to speak to her some day i think after maria's performance at miss universe representing australia not just has she broken barriers shattered glass ceilings i mean if there was a word better than that i would use that for her and she has proven that not just whether she was short whether it was about her ethnicity whether it was about her native origin she proved that there is absolutely no obstacle that you can overcome it wasn't even just about her height i'm sure maria faced so many questions and there were a lot of people who were trying to bring her down and look what is she doing right now what has she made of herself and again i think she's one of the best examples if you have to look at the miss universe pageant top 10 placement did not win but look at her what she took from the pageant is what really matters and so those are some of the beauty queens who i wanted to talk about in today's video and hopefully inspire some of you and i hope i was able to alleviate some of the concerns that so many contestants have when it comes to height and that's all for today's video guys i hope you found this motivating inspiring helpful and also a little bit of fun because there were so many fun stories to get to know about past beauty queens as always i love you guys so so much and i will see you very soon in my next video bye bye